Bible and new truth. So, Jesus said something very interesting 2,000 years ago in John 16, 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it? When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, and he will show you the things to come. I'm going to turn on some fans. It is hot in San Diego. All right. Very interesting. Jesus says, I will guide you into all truth. He didn't say a little more truth. We'll have a little more fun. No, I'm going to guide you into all truth. He's probably that a time in the future this is going to happen. He continues in the 16th chapter of John. These things have I spoken to you in Proverbs, but the time comes when I shall no more speak to you in Proverbs, but I will show you plainly of the Father. Oh my goodness, what in the world? <laughs> Here we go. So, according to the Bible anyway, Adam and Eve were in the ideal in the Garden of Eden. Bang, they had some kind of a fall, which we're going to talk about today. 2,000 years after the fall, Moses comes with the Ten Commandments, right? God is now giving mankind some kind of rails to run on, right? Thou shalt, thou shalt not, don't do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. Before that, it's complete chaos to the point where God... Uh, destroys the world, at least the, the, the area that he's dealing with, with Noah and his uh, family. Uh, God destroys everything, at least in that we know in that area, and is beginning all over again. So now the Ten Commandments comes in. 2,000 years later, interestingly, Jesus comes with the New Testament Gospels, right? Jesus says, Jesus gets assassinated actually. Jesus was not supposed to die the way he did at all, and that's an easy case to make which we'll make at another time. 2,000 years later, now we've just passed 2023. It is time for an entirely new expression of God's truth. Every 2,000 years, every 2,000 years, there's a major explosion in the Judeo-Christian tradition, and we're in the middle of one right now. The completed testament age. God is trying to drive man back to the kingdom of heaven on earth. <laughs> Stay with me, Benny. Stay with me, honestly. Hang with me for a bit. Tap the screen, share the live. You will feel bad if you don't. <laughs> you, because as we go along, you're going to be illuminated, okay? So if we take the word history, take the word history, divide it into two words, just for fun. His story. History is not just a series of random disconnected events, but actually God's work through time. God is the animator of history. So, this is going to be a, a very abbreviated lecture. This is a lecture that takes hours to do. But I'm going to try to get this done in about 30, 40 minutes at the max. Bible jumps right in Genesis 127. God says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Ready for the next part? Boom. Male and female created he them. There's no way to pretzel this into anything other than what it says. The image of God is masculine and feminine. First revelation. <laughs> the Judeo-Christian world, well, the Christian world can't get their mind around this. The Jewish tradition understands the concept of Elohim, a plural God, a masculine and feminine. But Christians have a hard time getting their mind around this concept. But if we go to creation, now we're going to go into science, Mankind has man and woman. Animals have male and female. Plants have a stamen and pistil. Molecules have a cation, anion. Two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen. And what do you get? Water. Molecules are made of atoms with a proton and electron. Atoms are made of particles, have a positive and negative charge. P particles are made of energy, and energy is invisible. And now with the Higgs boson, that's the last stop on the atomic scale. That's the last stop, and this is how the physical world, atoms in the physical world, gain their mass. If they're gaining mass, they're gaining mass from an invisible source. There's no way around this. There's no way around this. The Higgs boson is the junction point between the invisible world and the physical world. Tap the screen, share the live. All right, here we go. Paul brings it forward 2,000 years from the fall and says something very interesting. 
the invisible, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they're without excuse. You can look around and see male and female. Paul was a Pharisee. Paul knew the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Old Testament, like the back of his hand. And he could see, wow, that verifies what I already believe. I see male and female birds, male and female lions, male and female dogs and cats and birds, etc., etc., men and women, right? So, the invisible, interesting Paul would say something like that so long, way before uh, electron microscopes and uh, microbiology. Back to our story. Back to our story. We're leading to an end here. Hang with me. Share the live. Share the live. Tap the screen. In the very next verse, God says, God blessed them and said, Be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion. Three very specific commands right after their creation in Genesis 1.27. Right after their question, their, their creation. And the Bible says, I am the Lord thy God, I change not. Malachi 3.6. If it's true 6,000 years ago, it's true today and it applies to us today. Back to our story. So, if that's really important, it's important to understand what does that mean? Be fruitful, multiply, have dominion. Nobody's ever explained it. Nobody's really ever explained it in detail. Let's break it down. How about that? Let's see what the chat's doing. Hey, Jessica. All right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Okay, what does it mean to be fruitful? This is for those that have an open mind, okay? If you don't, you're wasting your time. If you have an open mind and you want to see something you've never seen before, hang with me. What does it mean to be fruitful? Well, for Adam and Eve, it means they would unite their mind and their body centered on God, don't eat the fruit, which was the, God's command to them, if they do that, that, like Jesus said in John 10, 30, I and the Father are one. The Word made flesh, John 1, 14. He that sees me sees the Father. Why do we say that about Jesus? Because Jesus did this. Jesus did this, became a perfected individual. He perfected his mind and his body centered on God and became a perfected individual. That's why he could forgive sin. That's why he could walk on water. That's why he could raise the dead and heal the sick. Right? So this is what God wants from Adam and Eve. All right? This is what God wants. Individual perfection. That's why the Bible likens people unto trees. Trees and fruit, fruits of the Spirit. It's a symbolic metaphor for growing to perfection. Three commands, remember, be fruitful, multiply, have dominion. We're, we got the other two to go. Here we go. Bang. So we're already got fruitful out of the way. We got an individually perfected Adam and Eve. Ideally, they should do this. They should multiply. Perfect man, perfect Adam, perfect Eve. Centered on God, boom. See, the heart of God is everything. This is why people don't believe in God, because they don't understand the heart of God. They haven't connected with the Spirit of God. They just see it as some mechanical thing out there, or don't see that as a mechanical thing out there, but they never connect to the heart, the intellect and emotion and will of God. So, Adam and Eve need to perfect themselves individually, centered on God, and then they will have a perfected child. That's all they can do. The only thing they can do is have a perfected child. This becomes a perfected family, society, nation, and perfected mankind. This is what God wanted for Adam and Eve, to multiply children of perfection, family of perfection, society, nation, the world. We still got a blessing to go, right? How are we doing? Jessica, you like this? <laughs> you getting this? It sounds like you're getting it. It's not mechanical repetitive prayer, but to purify the heart. Dad, there you go. Oh, Ali Fafa, you're too sharp, man. <laughs> Third blessing, have dominion. Oh my goodness, look at this. Look at this. Perfected mankind now comes up here in relationship to the created world, kingdom of heaven on earth. Oh my goodness, can everybody see that? 
Can everybody see that? The kingdom of heaven on earth. That's right. Be fruitful, multiply, have dominion. It's important to understand this, to understand the fall of man and how it could happen. Right? Oh, heresy, how you doing? <laughs> You're here. God understands it. That's right. Okay. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. We've never seen it. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard. We've never seen the kingdom of heaven in all the history of mankind because this wasn't done. And if Adam and Eve don't do this, nobody else can. This infects the rest of mankind because this wasn't done. That's why we have problems today. But this is the kingdom of heaven on earth. This is the kingdom of heaven on earth. Everybody got everybody tracking? Share it alive. We're just starting. We're just, we haven't even begun. This is going to blow your mind. You want to share this. Remember, Jesus promised a time was coming when everything would be made clear. I will show you plainly. I'm going to try to step out of the screen as much as I can. Show you plainly of the Father. Things are not going to be a mystery anymore. God is now revealing everything. The final phase of God's providence is now unfolding. So, let's begin to identify the characters in the biblical fall story. What do we have? Genesis 3. We have the Garden of Eden. We have many characters. We have seven characters in the Garden of Eden story. Everybody tracking? Slaves. That, that was done in the Old Testament. We're way past that. Let that go. Okay? We have a Garden of Eden. We have Adam. We have Eve. We have a serpent of some sort. We have a tree of life. We have a tree of knowledge of good and evil. And on that tree of knowledge of good and evil, there's some kind of a fruit. The fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And it's never, it's never named. Everyone says the apple, the apple, the apple. There's no apple. There's no apple. <laughs> Boom. God says to the man, Genesis 2.17, Do not eat the fruit, for in the day you eat of it, you will surely die. God tells the man, you will die. That command in the Bible doesn't say that that command was directly given to the woman, but she knew about it because the serpent tempted her with it. Did not God say you would know good and evil, etc.? But for some reason, there's an emphasis on God telling the man, remember this because this will figure in very large as the, as the presentation goes on. So what was the course of the fall? The fall apparently started with Lucifer, the archangel, the, the serpent, to Eve. Eve tempts Adam. Everybody falls. Let's identify our first character, the serpent. He's easy. How are we doing? Thanks for the follows, guys. Tap a screen, share the live. I'm you're going to miss it. <laughs> you don't share the live, you're, you're going to miss this. All right, here we go. Who's the serpent? It's not a snake. No, it's not. This snake somehow could talk. <laughs> Did not God say you would be as, as God, knowing good and evil? No. This snake knew God's will. Huh. Pretty sophisticated snake. Deceived Eve. Now it gets interesting. Track with me. Track with me. Here it comes. Revelation 12, 9. The ancient serpent, the devil, and Satan. Okay. Now, by the time John was writing the Revelation, this is about 90-ish AD, we have an ancient serpent. 4,000 years has evolved since uh, the, the first writing of the, uh, of the Pentateuch, or the Genesis story. So he's talking about an ancient serpent, not a, a contemporary serpent, but an ancient serpent, the devil Satan. So we've identified his name. Check it out. He's thrown down from heaven, and if he's thrown down from heaven, he must have been in heaven to begin with. So he's created with a good purpose originally, Lucifer. <laughs> he, now it assigns gender. Now it assigns gender. He and his angels were thrown down with him. It says it three times in one sentence to emphasize his gender. That will figure in large too as we go along. He's a leader of angels. Tracking? 
No dead magic. No. <laughs> no. God who tried to deceive. I mean, come on, man. Please. God who tried to deceive. Reevaluate. Be better. Isaiah 14, 12. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Lucifer is Satan. Boom. It's a symbol. The serpent is a symbol for the archangel Lucifer. That's one of our characters. But we're not done, though. Does he look like this? Oh, my goodness. He's red and, and has a big pitchfork and a, and a pointy tail. and He's surrounded by fire. No. C.S. Lewis said one of the greatest tricks of Satan was to get people to believe that he doesn't exist. This kind of imagery is how it happens. Nobody believes this. Nobody in their right mind believes this. So those images run from that to the most ridiculous and inane like this. So what's the real image of Lucifer? Probably a bit like that. Really good looking, really smart, smooth tongued devil. Oh yeah, yeah. Serpent, the most subtle beast of the field. It's a symbol for the Archangel Lucifer. Everybody tracking? C.S. Lewis, I did not say C.S. Lewis is a prophet. He's a writer, former atheist, by the way, who went on to pen dozens of very famous books, including the Narnia series. Yeah. Wait till he find out he's the devil. That's right. Okay, so, remember. Now, the creator is the harmonized being. Remember Genesis 127, the nature of God is masculine and feminine. That means everything that is positive, everything that's negative, everything that's masculine, everything that's feminine, internal character, intellect, emotion, and will, or heart. This is the internal nature of God. And external form, the created world. God is the harmonized being of all that is masculine, all that is feminine, all that is subject, all that is object, right? So, we have Lucifer representing the intellect of God. God has assigned Lucifer to raise his children, right? God has assigned Lucifer to raise his children. He's the L-U-C is a Latin prefix for light. He's the light bringer. So he represents the intellect of God. Gabriel, references to Gabriel, Daniel 8, 16, Luke 1, 11. Gabriel represents the emotion of God. Gabriel always brings glad tidings. Mary, you're going to give birth to Jesus, the Son of God. Gabriel appears to Zechariah in the temple. So your son's going to be born. Your wife is going to have a child after all of your struggles. Uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth always had a hard time having a baby, having a son, to, to an, an heir, right? He's the high priest in Judah. And Gabriel comes and tells him, oh, don't worry. Your prayers are heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and his name will be John. He'll be the Elijah figure. That's another, that's another story. <laughs> so Michael, Daniel 10, 13, 21, Michael represents the will of God. So God has assigned three angels, Lucifer, Michael, and Gabriel, to educate his children. Primary, though, is Lucifer. Intellect, emotion, and will. Everybody tracking? Share the live, tap the screen. So Satan is just working still. In this. Now the Bible does not contradict itself. Our understanding of it contradicts itself. Khaleesi, you like this? Okay, here we go. Let's identify the fruit now. The fruit. What's the fruit? Everybody says the apple, the apple, the apple. There's no apple. No apple. Is it literal or symbolic is the question. We have to ask ourselves the question. Does a God of love test with death? No. The Bible's clear. James 1.13. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted to do evil, nor does he tempt any man. It's not a test from God. It's not a test from God. Absolutely not. Jesus said, Matthew 15, 11, not that which goes into the mouth defiles a man, but that which comes out, this defiles a man. It's not what you eat. It's what comes out of your mouth. 
that defiles you. The Bible says very clearly that when God created the world, it was good. Everything created was good. No way around it. Even animals avoid poisonous food. Birds are certain things that birds won't even eat because they know it's poisonous. And fruit has never been valued more than life. I love watermelon. I love watermelon. Yum, yum, yum. I love apples. I love all kinds of fruit, right? But no matter how delicious a fruit would, would be, if someone brought it to me, look at this, this award-winning watermelon. It's so good. Let's cut it open. Boom. Yeah, here you go. But the minute you eat it, you're going to die. <laughs> so it's nothing they're eating. It's something so precious and so valuable that they're willing to sacrifice their lives for it. We have to get a, get a grip on this. The death caused by this fruit unalives, that's for the TikTok people, unalives generation after generation. No matter what, we're always born into this situation of sin. Even though we weren't responsible for it, unfortunately we inherit that just by virtue of being born. Gravitational thought is real. The thought of darkness gives birth to layers of heavy clouds. That's right. <laughs> Humans have lied for so long they've created their own hell. Stop lying. Stay in God's grace. Yes. I'll pass on a God that allows slavery. Hey, hey, listen, man. I had cancer in 2017. I didn't blame God. I didn't blame God. That wasn't God's fault. All right? So, literal fruit? No. Now, the Bible says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Genesis 3.24, interesting. He placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Then we come to Revelation 22.14, Blessed are they that wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life. So there, there will be access to this tree of life at some point in the future. What does it mean? It means that at the fall of man, nobody could, be, could reach perfection on their own. That's the symbology of the cherubim guarding the way to the tree of life. The tree of life is actually Adam's potential to become a person who fulfills the ideal of creation. Adam is the tree of life. Eve is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's not about trees, but about the first human ancestors. The tree of life is Adam. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is Eve. The fruit, guess, it's a symbol. It's a symbol. It's a symbol of Eve's love. Oh man, we're just getting started here. Share it alive. Tap the screen. Adam, Eve, bam. So how could this happen? In the light of an all-knowing, omnipresent, loving God, how in the world could something like the fall of man happen like this? Here we are, fallen mankind. God's will, boom, hits our free will, bang. If we fulfill the will, God's will gets accomplished. And if it shall come to pass, if you will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, observe my commandments, I will set thee on high above all nations, boom. But if it's not fulfilled, Satan's will fulfilled, it shall come to pass if you will not hearken unto the Lord, all these curses will come upon you. This is free will. This is the importance of free will. God, this is the most important point. If you're not tracking with me so far, track on this. God knows all the possible choices we might make and is prepared for each and every one. But our choices are not predetermined. God knows all the possibilities. 360 degrees in every direction. Oh, I'm not thinking for myself, really. I'm 69 years old. I came to this over a long, long time of thought, study, prayer, discussion with people much smarter than me. To think for myself. <laughs> I used to be a hardcore atheist. Hardcore. Oh, man. That's another story. So, what happens? Adam and Eve are here spiritually, they're not perfect. They are created with a sinless nature with the potential for perfection. Tap the screens, share the live. I told you this was going to be good. I told you, I told you, and we haven't even got to the point yet. Adam and Eve must grow through three stages of growth in order to be perfected. 
in this indirect dominion, they have a responsibility. Don't eat the fruit. While they're here, it's like when you have children, what do you do? You put uh, protectors on your electrical outlets. Because while they're children, they have the tendency to put a knife or a fork <laughs> into the wall and get electrocuted, right? So while they're growing, they need something to keep them on the track. Something to do because God doesn't want robots. God, they've got to have some skin in the game, right? They've got to be able to say when all is said and done, God, we did it. Look, we did it. We resisted the fruit in that, in that growth period. We punched through. We became one with God. Fulfill the purpose of creation. Remember, be fruitful, multiply, have dominion. Be fruitful, multiply, have dominion. That's what it means. This is being fruitful. Now they can multiply. Now they can have dominion. So what's the course and motivation? Here we go. Now the rubber hits the road. Everybody track with me. <laughs> Hit that screen. Share the live because here it comes. Here it comes. Isaac, are you here? Isaac Morales. So the human fall, the spiritual fall and the physical fall. Adam and Eve have a spirit body. Where is it? Where's my scripture? There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. 1 Corinthians 15, 44. There's a natural body and a spiritual body, an unseen body. Lucifer is a spirit. He has a spiritual, a substantial spiritual body. Remember, this serpent tempted Eve. He had some kind of substantial relationship with Eve in the spirit and then Adam and Eve have a spirit and they have a physical body as well Lucifer no physical body all right here we go bang spiritual fall happens here Lucifer tempts Eve with something Eve brings it in the physical world bang they fall spiritual and physical share the live Looney Tunes yeah you just came in didn't you Anthony <laughs> What does a spiritual fall look like? Here we go. Here's God. Lucifer, Gabriel, and Michael are the three archangels representing the intellect, emotion, and will of God. They are created before man to assist God in the creation for the preparation of the world for the coming of God's children. Okay? Bang. But Lucifer, Lucifer is the educator. God's children have to be educated. They got to know what's going on. So here's Adam and Eve. Now, Lucifer's been here. We don't know how long. We simply don't know how long Lucifer's been here before the creation of Adam and Eve, God's children. The archangels, the, the angelic realm, and God are preparing the entire world for billions of years. That's right, billions of years. The earth is not 6,000 years old. The earth is approximately 13 billion. It took a long time to do this for God. And so now, Lucifer, this sets up a situation called sibling rivalry. In the psychological terms, it's sibling rivalry, where the elder child is jealous of the younger children. Those that have brothers and sisters, you know what I'm talking about. There's a name for it. It's called sibling rivalry. The elder child feels like mommy and daddy don't love me quite as much because the new baby requires so much attention, right? Same thing's happening here. Remember. These guys are not perfected. None of them are perfect. They have a sinless nature with the potential to be perfect. F based on Lucifer fulfilling his responsibility to raise Adam and Eve, he will be perfected. They will be perfected. And there will be no fall. So, what's Lucifer doing? Lucifer feels a lack of love from God. Wow, God, I've been here for a billion years, and all of a sudden these guys come, and God loves them more than me. So, he goes, why does he go to Eve? They have some kind of illicit relationship in spirit. Well, remember in Revelation 12, 9, we've assigned masculine nature to Lucifer. Eve is a woman. There's a natural attraction here. Lucifer is not attracted to Adam. Positives repel. Lucifer is attracted to Eve to try to make up for the love he feels he's missing from God. That's why he goes to Eve. So now, they have fallen. They are now cut off spiritually from God. Adam here, though, hasn't done this. Adam hasn't fallen yet. 
right? Remember, there's a natural body and a spiritual body. 1 Corinthians 15, 44. Adam could have stopped it right there and said, wait a minute, Eve, back off. <laughs> he didn't do that. He fell for it too. But he could have been the first Messiah. Adam could have interceded for Eve and the archangel on behalf of God, and it would have been a speed bump. It would have been very easy to restore this situation, but Adam fell prey to it. See? They've got to go through three stages of growth. They've got to go through three stages of growth. There's no way around it. There's no way around it. <laughs> the story is ridiculous. Right. You've never heard this story before. <laughs> this is brand new. This is brand new. God is revealing them. Here we go. We still haven't gotten to the point yet. Spiritual fall. Genesis 19. And there came two angels of Sodom at evening, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. Stay with me. He bowed himself uh, with his face toward the ground, and he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night. Wash your feet. You'll rise up early and go on your way. They said, No. We will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned into him and entered into his house. Two angels are visiting Lot uh, 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 and at the gate of Sodom. He wants them to come in, wash your feet, rest, relax, spend the night, and then go in the morning. They say, no, we want to we hang out in the street tonight. For some reason, these angels want to hang out in the street. He presses on them, and, and he, they, they, okay, all right, we'll come in and, and stay with you. He baked bread for them and he did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, com compassed the house around, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men that came into thee this night? Bring them out to us that we may know them. Oh my goodness. How can this happen? What do they mean by let us know them? This is very, very clear. Now we're homing in on what the fall of man is. Stay with me, tap the screen, share the live. To know in biblical terms means to have a sexual relationship. Tracking with me? I don't know if I can say the word on TikTok without getting thrown off. Genesis 4.1, Adam, what? Adam knew his wife? Had knowledge? Tree of knowledge? Tree? Wait a minute, huh? Knew his wife and she bore him a son, Cain. Uh, again, Genesis 4.17, Adam, Knew his wife, had knowledge of his wife. Wait a minute, two and two is adding up here, isn't it? And gave him a son, Abel. What? Not again. Yeah, Matthew 1, 24, 5. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took upon him his wife, Mary, right? And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus. Adam had knowledge of his wife twice, it says here, they actually had three sons, Cain, Abel, and Seth. But they're tying the word new knowledge to sexuality. Remember, we've got the physical fall now. Here we go. We already have the spiritual fall. Spiritual fall is done. Hang with me, tap the screen, share the live. Remember, Adam and Eve are here, Lucifer and Eve have already fallen. They've already separated from God. Now it's up to Adam to either resist or acquiesce. What does he do? Bang. He falls with Eve. Boom. Illicit relationship in body and spirit. Eve and Lucifer have a spiritual relationship. Adam and Eve have a physical and spiritual relationship. Remember, <laughs> Lucifer and Eve are attracted by nature Adam and Eve are attracted by nature. Positive and negative. They're just like magnets. They, they go together, right? So, back to the this, this story of the angels visiting Lot. And he says, bring them out as we know them. And Lot went out the door into them and shut the door and said, I pray you, brethren, do not do so wickedly. The angels wanted to know, the people of the, of the town wanted to know the men the angels that came to them. This shows that this was, this was actually happening in the Old Testament time. This relationship between spirits or angels and physical people. Remember, natural body and spiritual body. It's tangible. That's why Jesus said, Lay not up treasures on earth where moths do break in or corrupt and robbers do break and steal. 
lay your treasures up in heaven in the eternal world where moths do not uh, destroy and, and uh, rust is not corrupt. Again, free will. Free will is everything. God, the, the free will to God is the most precious thing. The most precious thing. Because with that, God has children or he has robots. God can make servants. He made the angelic realm. He made Lucifer, Gabriel, Michael. He can make servants all day long. He doesn't want, do you want a servant? Nobody wants a servant. You want a child. You want a child. You want a breathing, living, loving relationship with your children. This is what God wants. But the only way that can possibly happen is through the proper utilization of free will. You want your children to want to love you. They want to be with you because they love you. This is exactly what God wants. And this is what, this is what Adam and Eve failed to do. Okay, now, here we go. We're coming in to the final lap. What was the fall of man? What was the angel's sin? Oh my gosh, here it comes. Get ready. Seat belts fastened, thinking caps on. Here comes the conclusion. How long do we go? Uh, hey, I only went 35 minutes. Not bad. <laughs> Perfect. The angels which kept not their first estate, first estate, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. What did he say? The angel's sin was an illicit sexual relationship between Lucifer and Eve. What? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Mm. Lucifer and Eve had an illicit spiritual sexual relationship. What's the human sin? Involved those parts, sexual parts. She took of the fruit and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her he did eat. And the eyes of them were open and they knew they were naked. All of a sudden being naked is a problem. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. What do you do with an apron? Cover your mouth? Cover your eyes? They cover down here. Because all of a sudden that's a problem. <laughs> if they're eating an apple which is not named they're spitting the fruit out. Oh, this is terrible. Or they're throwing the fruit away as far as they can. They're hiding the fruit behind their back. Something. But no, the first thing they do, whew, they're covering their lower parts. Because that's what they sin through. I covered my sin as Adam did by hiding my iniquity in my bosom. Crime of the first human ancestors. Illicit sexual relationship outside the blessing of God. God said, be fruitful first multiply only on the foundation of being fruitful and perfected first then you multiply then and only then do you multiply and third have dominion bring an entire world of sinless people into existence now like I said this is an abbreviated this is a very very short abbreviated thing I'll give you one more one more slide tree reproduces by fruit the fruit is on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil right the tree of the, the fruit is on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We've already established that Adam is the tree of life. Eve is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That fruit is right there and it's sexuality. How does a tree reproduce? Through its fruit, through its seed, okay? They were ashamed of their nakedness only after the fall of man. Before the fall of man, they're fine. Naked and unashamed. After the fall, oh, oh, right? It only makes sense. Does this not make sense? Does anybody see this? The way of the adulterer is this. She eats, wipes her mouth, and says she has done no wickedness. Proverbs 30, 20. In Old Testament parlance, eating was synonymous with sexuality. Having knowledge of a woman meant sexuality. That's just the way it was. That's the way they wrote. But this has been lost through time. Jesus implies parentage. You are of your father the devil. Jesus words John 8 48. He implies a genetic connection to Lucifer. Wait a minute. Anybody? 
I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. It's in the it's in the DNA now. <laughs> Everybody get that? All right. So I'll tell you what. I think we'll stop. Yeah, it's a symbol for the sexual love of Eve. If if Adam and Eve fulfill the responsibility. Good happens. If they don't, evil happens. That's, that's all there is to it. It starts out with the first human ancestors. If they do it right, they set the pattern. They set the template for perfected family. And then the world, we have the kingdom of heaven on earth. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. I'm going to leave that right about there. And uh, I'm going to turn off my camera. This will be going up on, on YouTube tonight. <laughs>